Secretariat, may, may we acknowledge the resource persons? Good morning, Mr. Chair. For today's hearing, we have online, or we have physically present, um, Representative Dalia A. Loyola from the 5th District of Cavite, together with Mayor Roy Loyola of Car Carmona Cavite. Good morning, sir. And online, we have Representative Dale Malapitan, 1st District of Caloacan City. We also have Mayor Oscar Malapitan of Caloacan City. From the Department of Interior and Local Government, we have USEC Rico Judge Echeverri. From the DOF, Bureau of Local Government Finance, we have Director Pamela Kizon, Director of the Local Fiscal Service. We have Ms. Brenda Miranda, the Chief of the Policy Planning, Programming, and Standards Division. And the Ms. Mary Ann Rada, the Chief of the Local Financial Data Analysis Division. From the Department of Budget and Management, we have Director John Aris Makaspak, together with Kathleen Pilapil, and Ms. Rowena Marte. From the Land Management Bureau, we have Engineer Bienvenido Cruz, Division Chief, Geodetic Survey Division. We have Engineer Jenalyn Verbo, Chief of Evaluation and Statistics Section, and Attorney May Casita. From the Philippine Statistics Authority, we have Division Chief Raul Lodovice of the Population and Housing Census Division. From the Bureau of Internal Revenue, we have Attorney Ron Mikael Uy and Attorney Raymond Ipio. From the League of Provinces of the Philippines, we have Executive Director Sandra Paredes and Director for Policy, Ms. Angelica Sanchez. Also from the League of Cities of the Philippines, we have Mayor Jerry Trenas. Uh, we have Mayor Arnan Panaligan of Calapan City. We have Mayor Francis Anthony Garcia of Balanga City. We have Mayor Jennifer Tan of Tangub City. And Ms. Veronica Hitosis. Uh, Mr. Chair, the League of Cities would also like to inform the committee that their National Executive Board are also watching the live stream at the moment. Sir. Thank you. You forgot to mention the president of the League of Cities, Mayor Bing Leonardia. I, I see him. My apologies, sir. So we have acknowledged all. Uh, good morning. Under consideration today are the following measures. House Bill 8207, Converge uh, the bill uh, relay allowing the conversion of a municipality with either a population of at least 100,000 100, inhabitants as certified by the PSA or a contiguous territory of at least 100 square kilometers as certified by the Land Management Bureau into a component city if it has a locally generated annual income of at least 250 million pesos. Amending for that purpose. Section 450 of the Republic Act 7160 of the Local Government Code. This bill was already approved on third reading and passed on to the Senate last month. The other measure that this committee will tackle is Senate Bill 255, authored by Senator Laxon, an act exempting the from the population and land area requirements the conversion of a municipality into a component city if it has a locally generated annual income of at least 250 million pesos and adopting ERA portability for every subsequent conversion of a municipality into a city amending for such purpose Section 450 of Republic Act 7160 of the Local Government Code. These, are, these two measures will be tackled together. And the second measure as part of the agenda of this committee is House Bill 77. Zero, an act of reapportioning the first legislative district of the city of Caloocan into two legislative districts approved by the House of Representatives and authored by Congressman Malapitan, uh, Villanueva, Eddie Villanueva, Domingo Rivera, Geogracias, Gio Divi, Sabiliano, among others. So we start first with the uh, law conversion of uh, uh, 
municipalities in, into cities authored by Congressman Roy Loyola, uh, Dalia Loyola. Uh, Cong Congresswoman Dalia is uh, physically present. Perhaps we can uh, uh, have an op you can have an opening statement. But for the record, it appears from the records of this committee that this measure was already approved by the House uh, during the 17th Congress and reached the plenary of the Senate during the 17th Congress, but most probably because of a uh, lack of material time, it never reached the third reading. So the committee now is uh, predisposed to adapting all the records emanating from the 17th Congress as part of the committee uh, records for the 18th Congress. The, during the 17th Congress, the Committee on Local Government of the Senate was chaired by Senator uh, Juan, Juan Angara. So may we have the opening statement coming from the uh, author of the measure, Congresswoman Dalia A. Loyola. You have the floor, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Senator Francis Tolentino. To the members of the committee, Senator Pampilo Lacson, the, the author of our counterpart bill, Senate Bill number 255, our resource speakers, guests, good morning. House Bill 8207 seeks to amend Section 458-450 of the Local Government Code by way of providing, a, providing an exception to the general rule, thereby allowing the conversion of a municipality with either a population of 100,000 inhabitants as, as certified by the PSA or a contiguous territory of at least 100 square meters as certified into a component city if it has a locally generated average income of at least 250 million. We have gone a long way since the inception of RA 17160 30 years ago. But like any other measure, there is a need to recalibrate this landmark legislation to better serve its purpose, that is for our country to further reach its untapped potential. Our area of concern is the dilemma of municipalities, which through the years have proven that they are both capable to provide services to their people and are active partners for economic growth as seen in the level of locally generated income, but are hindered from being a component city due to the land or population requirement. The bill addresses the above-mentioned dilemma by giving this categorical category of economically performing municipalities incentive to strive more and to increase their locally generated income as a requirement for cityhood and further the economic development in the long run. It is my hope that with the able leadership of our honorable chair and the assistance of our resource person, the proposed bill will again warrant the approval of this committee and this August chamber. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congresswoman Loyola. Uh, if I may uh, make a correction, with all due respect, you you are probably you will probably be quoted when you mention 100 square meters. It should be 100 square kilometers. Uh, for the record, that should be corrected, and it's part of the uh, existing local government code. And and for the record, likewise, what this committee is tackling like right now is not the conversion of a particular municipality into a city. We are, we are deliberating on a proposed measure that will amend the local government code and it will not affect just a particular municipality. We are not referring right now to, a, to just the municipality where the uh, author uh, comes from, which is Carmona Cavite, but all other municipalities similarly situated. Am I correct, uh, Congresswoman? Yes, Your Honor. So, so in effect, we will uh, evade uh, confuse, confusing accusation that we are dealing with class legislation. So it applies to all. So may, may we ask uh, my colleagues here if they have a, an opening statement, uh, Senator Lacson. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. I have no opening statement. I'll just listen to the arguments of both uh, sides referring to the League of Cities of the Philippines and the uh, proponents uh, of this measure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Lacson. Uh, may, may we ask Senator Marcos, Amy Marcos, uh, if she has an opening statement. Senator Marcos, you have the floor.
I, I think Senator Marcos is uh, multitasking. She's attending likewise a an ongoing agricultural committee hearing. May, may we may we know from uh, the committee secretariat if Senator De La Rosa is already around? Sir, he's not yet online. He's not yet online. Yes, pero... but we've already sent the link, sir. I thank you. Having acknowledged our colleagues, we start with uh, we start with DBM. I think DBM. Uh, we will need some explanations from you. Is the DBM around, <laughs> Director Makaspak? Director Makaspak. Yes. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair, and to all the guests and other senators. Director Makaspak, I, I think you will have to answer the following questions. Uh, the, both measures speak of 250 million as the threshold for conversion into a city from a municipality. Question one: Is that achievable? Question number two, which is very important. What will be the effect of the Mandanas ruling for 2022? Will it diminish the budgets of the uh, municipalities, barangays, cities, and provinces? And if there will be additional incremental budgets, how much would the average be? If you can answer those questions, you have uh, served this committee right. Go ahead, uh, Director Maaspa. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So I guess for the first question, we can refer that to the to the Bureau of Local Government Finance, who, uh, who is in a better position to address questions with regard to to the applicability of that specific factor in the conversion or creation of a municipality. Now, with regard to the question about the effect of the Supreme Court ruling in the Mandanas case, on a year-on-year -year basis, we expect the ERA shares of the local government units to increase by around 55 uh, to 60, uh, 55 to 56 percent from 2021 to 2022. But if we will compare the uh, ERA shares of local government units in 2022, Director, can, uh, post, Director, excuse me, can you can you repeat that the the increase that you mentioned? The increase, uh, Mr. Chair, is from 2021 to 2022 will be around 55 to 56 uh, percent. So if a municipality is receiving 100 million in 2020, in, in 20, it received 20, 100 million in 2021, in 2022, that will already be around 155 to 156 million pesos. So that will be the the fiscal impact if we will compa compare the year-on-year -year, uh, increase. So that will be applicable, Mr. Chair, to all local government units, to all provinces, cities, municipalities, and barangays. The nominal amount will will uh, differ depending on the population, the area, and the number of LGUs entitled to ERA, which are our in the computation of the ERA shares of local government units. Director, Director, can you answer a, a supplemental question? Medyo nawawala ka eh. Having a 56% increase, has the DBM already issued a circular to LGUs on how to appropriate the corresponding increase coming from the Mandanas ruling? Because, Director, I don't know if you're speaking in behalf of uh, Secretary Wendell Abisado. I am familiar with the uh, DBM Circular 138, which was issued by the DBM, uh, I think, late December last year, in joining all departments and national government agencies to prepare for the Mandanas ruling. So are you aware of the, uh, um, of course, you should be aware of the DBM Circular 138. What will now be the effects in so far as the LGUs are concerned. Is there a corresponding circular coming from DBM to the LGUs uh, for that uh, matter, uh, Director? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So the National Budget Memorandum Number 138 was issued purposely for the uh, budget call or budget preparation for 2022, and it was intended for the national government agencies. For them to already start uh, identifying the specific programs and projects under the budgets of those national government agencies that fall within the expenditure assignments of the local government units. 
pursuant to the Local Government Code of 1991 and other uh, special laws. Now, for the specific information on the era shares of local government units for 2022, we have yet to issue the local budget memorandum for the purpose in a, because we have yet to receive the certification from the Bureau of Customs and Bureau of Internal Revenue at, so as of this, of this time. So we expect for the BIR and the BOC to submit the documents maybe next uh, month, March, upon, upon approval and the uh, determination of the DBCC of the manner of the computation of the, Director, of the Senator national... Lacson, Senator, Director uh, Makaspak, Senator Lacson would like to uh, interject. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just, to, just a point of clarification, the sudden spike of at least 55% will only be registered for the year 2022 compared to 2021. This is not on a year-on-year -year basis after 2022. Is that correct, uh, Director Magaspa? That's correct, sir. That is correct, Pa. Kasi baka sa ahan nila, uh, every year, tataas ng 55%. So mabuti na yung walang false hopes. Thank you. That's correct, Pa. Thank you, sir. So, so Director, when do, you, when do we expect to receive your uh, circular concerning LGUs? Because... Under that circular 138, all uh, top-tiered top functions of the national government, including DSWD, Department of Health, we're talking of vaccines, will now be devolved in terms of funding to the LGUs. So when do we expect to receive that uh, circular you mentioned a while ago? As soon as we receive the certifications from the BIR and the BOC, Bureau of Customs, we will already issue for the, the circular uh, providing the amount of the ERA shares of LGUs in 2022 as well as the corresponding uh, guidelines in the preparation of the 2022 annual budgets. So, so Director, uh, relating that to, to our agenda today, pwede bang masabi mo directly na wala dapat pangambahan na liliit ang ira ng mga LGUs kung hindi madadagdagan pa. Lalaki pa by 55 to 56 percent. That's that correct, correct, sir. Assumption? And we yes, expect that to happen in 2022. That's correct, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, proceed with your presentation. Anything more to add, uh, Director Makaspak? Concerning the twin measures, the House Bill 8207 and uh, Senate Bill 255, ang gusto sana nating marinig dito, ano yung effect naman noong portability uh, provision ng bill ni Senator Lacson? Pag ikaw ay municipality, uh, if I'm correct, uh, uh, Senator Lacson, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you carry with you your previous era that you got as a municipality when you're converted into a city. What will be the net effect uh, concerning that? And if you tie this up with the Mandanas ruling, hindi ba dalawa yung makikere mo? Daladala mo yung era na dagdag sa'yo nung Mandanas because of the Mandanas ruling, and then when you convert into a city, nadagdagan ka pa because you're a city. Is that a, a, an erroneous assumption, Director Makaspak? Yes, uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, Mr. Chairman, we informed that the DBM will officially submit our position paper on all the proposed uh, measures. But uh, initially, with all due respect to, to the authors of the proposed measure with regard to the era portability, we, may we respectfully emphasize lang po that the uh, era shares of local government units is zero sum, meaning any increase in the era share of one LGU, say a municipality converted into a city, will inevitably result to a tantamount decrease in the era shares of all the other existing uh, cities. And I think that is one of the reasons why the League, why, why the League of uh, Cities are sometimes opposing conversions of uh, certain municipalities into cities. Kasi nababawasan po yung uh, uh, era shares nila. And since cities are mandated under the local government code to provide basic services and facilities than municipalities under uh, the local government code of 1991, specifically section 17, paragraph uh, B and uh, 4 of the code, it is reasonable for the municipalities converted into a city to be entitled to a just share in the era in order 
for them to to fully deliver the mandated functions to to cities. So if if the committee will direct the DBM to provide the sample simulation for this purpose, then we will provide both. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You, uh, may I? Which brings us to the more contentious uh, issue. No? Ito yung uh, major opposition ng League of Cities of the Philippines. Ang tanong is, anong impact nito? Or, let's put it uh, another way. Ano? Ilang municipalities, by virtue, if and when this uh, measure, yung Senate Bill 255, is enacted into law, Ilang bang municipalities ang maapektuhan positively at anong impact naman ito do sa existing number of cities that are receiving their uh, ira on the basis of pre-Senate Bill 255 at saka yung uh, House Bill 8207. I, I believe it's not that much. no. And uh, as uh, per research that uh, my staff conducted, I think only two at the most, you know will benefit and uh, fortunately or unfortunately for purposes of this hearing parehong sa Cavite i think uh, ang tatamaan dito Carmona and Rosario but let me emphasize that this will not affect the existing cities like Kawayan for example kung magiging ang threshold 250,000 or 250 million per annum at kapos sa 250 million yung existing cities na, it doesn't mean that they will revert back to uh, being uh, a municipality instead of uh, enjoying the uh, benefits of a city. Let me just emphasize that. Ano? Kasi merong minsang misunderstanding that since we're increasing the threshold from 100 million to 250 million, it's just uh, a way of uh, making up for the uh, deficiency in population uh, and or territorial uh, area, meaning yung, yung meets and bounds noong uh, municipality. Ang, ang point ko naman dito na nire raise the reason why I uh, filed this bill is these municipalities, they're locked in a territorial landlock. No? There's no way for them to comply with that uh, uh, requirement under the local government code na maging city. Because landlocked na eh. they cannot re reclaim, uh, they cannot increase uh, their, their geographical area. So that's the primary reason why, in fairness to those municipalities who are striving hard to uh, infuse progress in the respective municipalities. And uh, I will cite Carmona, for example, ano? yung kanilang uh, per annum na income, nasa mga 400 plus million, and we're denying them the opportunity to convert into a city. Please correct me if I'm, uh, if I'm wrong, uh, Congresswoman Dalia and uh, Mayor Roy Loyola. Yung, ang income nyo, presently, no? magkano yung income ng uh, Carmona? As of 2019, is uh, 443 million, sir. 443 million. Compared to other cities now, na hindi aabot sa 250. But again, mm -hmm. I would like to emphasize na hindi sila babalik sa magiging municipal, pagiging municipality kung less than 250. This is just an exception to the to section 450 of the local government code. And there's enough basis for this uh, because merong uh, existing jurisprudence uh, principally or primarily anchored on the debates uh, that, uh, that uh, were undertaken during the bicameral conference uh, between the House and the Senate in 1991. No? Maliwanag na sinasabi doon, yung uh, income, yun ang primordial or primary concern. Yung population at saka yung, uh, yung uh, geographical area, parang booster lang ito. So on that note, yun ang reason why I filed Senate Bill 255. So, and of course, we'd like to hear the arguments uh, to be posited by the League of Cities, ano? kung ano yung main concern nila, so, so that we can address those concerns. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Laxon. Before we proceed, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Senator uh, Bato de la Rosa and uh, the Mayor of Bormoc, Mayor uh, Richard Gomez. Uh, Director Makaspak, are you done with your uh, presentation? So, we... nawala siya. 
Director Makaspak, DBM. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm still here, sir. We'll address na lang po any question. Yes, yeah, so we expect your position paper, but uh, uh, briefly, are you in agreement with the proposed increase of uh, the financial threshold in so far as city conversion is concerned? I, I know you're, you do not speak for on behalf of the department, but personally, are you an, in agreement? Uh, sir, we, we just uh, informed that the DBM will, will officially submit this position paper because the draft position paper that we have prepared is still for consideration and review by our principals. I just do not want to preempt any uh, decision for that they may have on these uh, proposed measures. But for the uh, uh, request po of uh, Senator Jackson to uh, compute the fiscal impact on the era shares of the local government units, we will do the simulation po and we will submit the simulation to the, to the committee. Okay, uh, Director, can we have that next week? Uh, yes, sir. We will do that, sir. Including the impact of the Mandana's ruling? Okay, sir. We will provide po all the all the scenarios po. Thank you, uh, Director Makaspak. Before we proceed with the other political personalities, I'd like to have BIR on board. Uh, BIR representative here is a certain attorney Oi. BIR. Uh, he hello. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Me mention was made by DBM uh, as to the report that they are expecting from you concerning the Mandana's ruling. When when should we expect that report from your office? Uh, uh, as, of, as of the moment, we are uh, the deliberating the uh, certificate and uh, up to now, it's uh, uh, not yet certain when the uh, submission to the DBM, Your Honor. Hello. Attorney Uy, Will, will the certification entail a downward trend considering the uh, pandemic uh, losses in terms of revenue collections or will, will you maintain your pre-pandemic projections? Kasi yung sinasabi kaninang 55 to 56%, malaki ito. So yung projections nyo ng tax collections natin uh, for this year, Kasi 2022 yung uh, Mandana's ruling, will it include the COVID-19 situation or uh, normal lang? Uh, sir, may we um, respectfully request that we uh, submit an official position paper on this matter? When, when do we expect that? Pwede ba simultaneous na as you submit to the DBM, you submit to this committee likewise, you're a... Uh, position paper? Sa, sa TBM, uh, sasabit nyo ay certification. Sa amin yes. yung position paper. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, yes, Mr. Speaker. Next week, uh, can we do that? Copy for ni Senator Lacson? Uh, yes. Yes, sir, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Ato. Hindi ako speaker. Thank you, Ato. Ah, sorry. Uy, sa <laughs> sa Congress. <Sorry. laughs> may, may we have the representative from the DILG? And then DOF, and then we go to the LCP. Unless Senator uh, Bato de la Rosa, uh, uh, I see him now. Uh, unless you have an opening statement, Senator de la Rosa. Tungkol po ito sa conversion ng municipalities into cities, uh, amend yung, uh, yung requirements. Uh, wala naman sa inyo, yung digos naman, city na sa Dapo del Sur. Uh, Senator Bato, uh, do you have an opening statement? Uh, so far, Mr. Chairman, wala. Uh, magkikig lang ako dito at uh, I am supporting you all the way. Taga-support mo lang ako, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Delated. Happy birthday again. Uh, may, we have, uh, may we have the ILG and then the OF uh, in that order and thereafter uh, we we'll proceed with the LCP. Uh, the ILG, any position from the DILG? Na matagal na po ito na-discuss. 17th Congress pa, so do you maintain the same position or uh, have you changed your mind at the ILG? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, may I be allowed to read briefly the position paper of the DILG which was prepared by the legal department? Go ahead, go ahead. This level finds no reason to object on hearing proposed legislative measure as the same is within the powers of Congress and Section 10, Article 10 of the Constitution 
which specifically provides that no province, city, municipality, or barangay may be created, divided, merged, abolished, or its boundary substantially altered except in accordance with the criteria established in the local government code and subject to approval by majority of the votes cast in a plebiscite in a political unit directly affected. Nevertheless, may we seek clarification with respect to Section 1 of House Bill Number 8207, wherein it provides that a municipality or a cluster of barangays with either a population of at least 100,000 inhabitants or a contiguous territory of at least 100 square kilometers may also be converted into a component city if it has a locally generated average annual income of at least 250 million pesos, end of quote. May we be enlightened on the intention of the legislature in using the word also? Is it the intention of the legislature to add another instance wherein a municipality or a cluster of barangays may be converted into a component city? Or is the intention of the proposed House bill is merely to amend specifically the number of inhabitants and the locally generated average annual income for a conversion into a component city? If it is the latter, may we respectfully suggest that the word also be omitted. Lastly, it is respectfully submitted that by lessening the population requirement from 150,000 to 100,000, there is a great possibility that a number of municipalities and or cluster of barangays may apply for conversion into a component city, considering the rapid increase in population. With respect to Senate Bill number 8207, it is observed that the title which reads exempting from the population and land area requirement, the conversion of a municipality into a component city, if it has a locally generated average annual income of at least 200... Yusek, Yusek, if I may uh, politely interrupt you, I, I think you got it uh, mixed up. Uh, there is no Senate Bill 8207. 8, House 8, Bill. 8207 refers to the recently passed on third reading, the House Bill, the House measure. I'm sorry, so I'm sorry, Your you Honor. probably got it mixed up. Proceed. I'm sorry, Your Honor. It's, it's House Bill 8207. Um, if it has locally generated average annual income of at least 250 million pesos, does not concur with the subject provision, which states 150, 250 million pesos may also be converted into a component city if it has either a population of not less than 100,000 in inhabitants or a continuous territory of at least 100 square kilometers. It is the understanding of this level that a municipality or cluster of barangays with an income of at least 250,000 may also be converted into a component city. 250 million, you said. Oh, I'm sorry, 250 million may also be converted into a component city if either the population or land requirement is present. Thus, it runs counter with the title that the population and land area are exempted for purposes of conversion. Lastly, it is suggested that both legislative measures be harmonized Despite the foregoing, this level supports the legislative intent and amendment of Section 450 of Republic Act Number 7160, otherwise the local government will serve. Uh, th thank you, Yusek. Uh, perhaps uh, some of uh, the authors who are yes. physically present Mr. Chairman, make the clarification. Senator this is uh, with regard to Senate Bill 255. Anna. It is the intent of the measure to merely provide an exception to Section 450. You know? The Undersecretary of the ILG may have a point you know, because of the uh, phrase may also be. So parang inaamend lahat yung mga requirements. The intent of the measure is really to provide an exception to the general rule regarding the said requirements by giving municipalities the capability of generating high locally generated income to convert into a city and reducing the number of population to at least uh, uh, 100,000 inhabitants. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, hindi ito magiging uh, amendment per se, but only an exception. Meaning, those municipalities or cities that have less than 250 uh, million 
pesos in uh, locally generated income will not be disqualified if and when this uh, measure is passed into law. Andun pa rin yun. Uh, nasa 100 million pa rin yung requirement as it uh, stands. Ano? So I would just like to make uh, that clarification uh, in regard to Senate Bill 255. Now, we, uh, may we hear from the House uh, author, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Laxon. Go ahead. First woman, uh, Loyola. Mr. Chair, with regards to House Bill uh, 8207, yun din po yung aming intention, providing an exception to the rule. So we submit na delete yung may also. And this also, this only refers to municipality and not cluster of barangays. Thank you, Congresswoman uh, Loyola. I was informed by the technical people here and with the permission of Senator Laxon and uh, our other uh, guests that uh, we should have a two-minute committee recess to enable the, the Secretariat to switch on to a new link because uh, well, wag, wag po kayong aalis doon sa link ninyo. Dito lang po sa technical staff. Meron silang isu-switch na, na kable. Uh, so, to enable us to smoothly proceed, the chair declares a two-minute committee recess. The committee hearing is resumed. Wala pa pa lang two minutes. May, may, may we ask now, uh, uh, Yusek Echeverri, are you done with your uh, position? We, we expect your position paper after the clarification coming from the authors of the, the measures. Yusek Echeverri? Sir, I'm sorry, I, I didn't get it. Can I think you're on mute. Yes, sir. Para na wala. Can you repeat the, the, the response? You second, Chiberi. We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. You, you, you are on mute. Naka, naka mute ka. Unmute. Go ahead. Can you hear me, Mr. Chair? Wala rin. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Mr. Chair? We cannot hear you, uh, Yusek. C can you hear me, Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair, can you hear me? You said, can you hear us? <coughs> we cannot hear you. Uh, siguro mag thumbs up ka. Kung na, ta so, can you proceed that, you said, Kachiberi? Can you hear me, Mr. Chair? Yes, yes, loud and clear. I, I didn't get the the response, Mr. Chair. Uh, it was garbled. Uh, uh, are you done with your presentation or are you yes. satisfied with the comments coming from the authors of the measures? So yes, Mr. When do, Chair. When do we expect your... Uh, do, do you have to amend your position paper? Or it's, is it the same? It, it will be the same, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Yusuke Kachiveri. We now proceed to Department of Finance. Any representative from the Finance Department? BLGF, Bureau of Local Government Finance. Mr. Chairperson. Di Director Pamela, good morning. Good morning po, Mr. Chairperson, Senator Tolentino. My name is Pamela Kison. I am representing the Bureau of Local Government Finance. During the last Congress, we, the BLGF already submitted our position paper, but we will update this, Mr. Chairperson, and also reiterate our position that the BLGF agrees in principle to the proposed increase in the income threshold for conversion of a municipality into a component city to an average of locally generated annual income of at least 250 million for the last two years based on 2012 constant prices. It is always our position, Mr. Chairperson, that fiscal autonomy must be the core foundation of uh, urban local governments, particularly for the cities, to sufficiently generate and sustain its own sources of income to fund the expanded basic services required in a city or in an urban governance. 
Last Congress, Mr. Chairperson, and we also take note the mention of the two municipalities of Senator Laxon earlier that uh, Carmona Cavite and Rosario Cavite will come in even with this threshold. We will also provide you computations because there might be other municipalities, municipalities that will also be able to comply with this. Mr. Chair. Uh, Director Pamela, I think uh, from our records, the this also probably was uh, retrieved from your records. And, and I'd like to place this on, on the committee records. The following municipalities would be uh, affected. Cainta, Rosario, Limay, Bataan, Santo Tomas, Batangas, which is now a city, Taytay, also in Rizal, Calaca, which is about to become a city, Marilao, in Bulacan and Maribeles in Bataan. Aside from that, uh, we, we do not have any list of municipalities that uh, that that are included. So if your if your office can provide one, uh, the better. And I have one question, uh, which yes, was Mr. you Chairman. you were referred to a while ago by uh, Director Makaspak of the BM uh, concerning the impact of the Mandanas ruling. Be because a lot of functions will be devolved. DSWD, Department of Health, may we know from you, uh, nawala na si Senator Bato, uh, what would be the effect in so far as, uh, in so far, uh, Senator Bato is there, what will be the effect in so far as police services uh, if the entire downloading of uh, the Mandanas ruling would be implemented by 2022? So, Will you be apportioning this na uh, ikaw, Municipality X, ito yung natanggap mo sa because of Mandana's ruling, ito yung pang DSWD mo, ito yung pang DOH mo, ito, ito yung pang PNP mo. Ganun ba yung gagawin nyo? Or you leave that to the autonomy, the fiscal autonomy of the LGU concern? Mr. Chairperson, we would like to apologize. When Director Makaspak mentioned us, uh, he is referring to the uh, income threshold increasing it to 250 million. We have an agreement that when it comes to Mandanas, Mr. Chairperson, DBM has the authority to speak on it. Hindi kayo kasi ikaw ang tinuro kanina. So mali, mali yung intindi ko. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, I, I suggest that DBM and uh, Bureau of Local Government Finance, uh, you should uh, brainstorm together. And thank you for your uh, position. Again, I reiterate, do you support this measure? Yes, Mr. Chairperson, we support the increasing of the treasure to 250 million pesos uh, based on 2012 constant prices, and we will submit and update our position paper, Mr. Chairperson. And mm -hmm. also taking note of your uh, instructions that we work together with DBM. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Director. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Senator Laxon is recognized. Uh, some municipalities uh, have been mentioned by the chair as uh, uh, potential beneficiaries uh, if this measure is passed into law. Now, may we hear from Mayor Loyola or Congresswoman uh, Loyola, Dalia, uh, kung halimbawa itong kainta, no? ang understanding ko is, as it is now, whether or not maipasa itong uh, measure, qualified na sila mag-city. Yes. Kasi they have qualified already under the requirements of the local government code. Paki expound nga. Uh, Jen, you're right. Uh, these uh, municipalities that were mentioned are already qualified to apply for the conversion of the city under the previous law without this, uh, without the recent law. Hindi po katulad ng uh, iilan lang, qualified na po sila na mag-apply. Hindi na nila kailangan i-apply ito pong i-discuss. So, pwede ba natin isa-isahin? Ano? Limay, Bataan, for example, with or without this measure being passed into law, pwede na sila mag-apply ng cityhood? Pwede na po. Okay. Maribelas, Bataan? Pwede na rin po. Marilao, Bulacan? Pwede na rin po, Your Honor. Calaca, Batangas. As a matter of fact, naipasa na natin na ito on third reading. Santo Tomas, Batangas, Rosa oh, of course, Rosario, Cavite, Cainta, Taytay. Those, these municipalities I mentioned, Ilan lang din tong magiging beneficiary 
kung may pa siya itong uh, House Bill 8207 and Senate Bill 255 Rosa among this Rosario. Rosario and, uh, and, and Rosario and Camona. Lampo. Only two. Oh. So yung impact doon sa mababaw sa zero sum, sinasabi kanina ni Yusek uh, Magaspak o Director Magaspak, uh, yung PAI, maliit lang yung uh, sa kabita yung pirot, di ba? <laughs> Actually, Your Honor, kung ngayong time na to at hindi pa po naipapasa yung report ng recent survey ng PSA, hindi pa rin po magkakalify ang Carmona. Kasi less than pa rin ho kami ng 100 million. So ngayon lang ho siguro kami itong recent 100,000. 100 plus uh, thousand lang na yung population. Ngayon lang po doon sa recent uh, survey na ginawa Setting po ng PSA. Setting that aside, ano, ang, uh, sinasabi, ang, ang, ang issue rito is ang worry ng LCP League of Cities, siyempre isa lang yung pa, hindi naman ito lalaki. Pag nagdagdag ng say dalawang uh, municipalities na magiging city, sa tingin ninyo, sa pag-aaral ninyo, gaano kalaki ang mababawa sa share nila sa ira? Negligible or substantial? Negligible lang ho. Nadalawa lang well, ako. we'll hear from them later on. Ano? As on the assumption that only two municipalities will benefit kasi kung uh, nakalista lahat dito, magbe-benefit, medyo, medyo may tama talaga sila. But uh, since you mentioned that with or without the uh, measure uh, under consideration being passed into law, hin talagang uh, qualified na talaga yung iba, minus Rosario and Carmona. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Lacson. Uh, may, may we now proceed? Si Mayor. Si Mayor. Uh, so, uh, may Mayor Loyola is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Honorable Senator Lacson, and other honorable members of this committee. Let me just emphasize that the based on the formula of the ERA distribution, uh, population is one of the biggest, if I'm not mistaken, population in land area has the biggest shares in the ERA distribution, considering that the two municipalities that may qualify under this uh, Bill a uh, subject of this uh, hearing, the era that will be uh, removed or taken from existing city will just be small, because uh, the two municipality has small land area and has small population. That will be all, Mr. Chair. So, dahil sa formulation, do sa formula pag compute ng era, hindi rin talaga malaki yung impact because malit talaga yung population at malit yung land area na ano rin ito, factor din ito sa computation ng ira. Totoo po. Okay. Mr. Senator. So talagang hindi malaki yung uh, impact doon sa main pie? Hindi Ikaka. po, Honorable Senator, at hindi ko sila masasaktan. Hindi masyado masakit. May galos din konti. Salamat. Thank you po. Thank you, uh, Mayor Loyola. We, we recognize, uh, before I proceed with uh, LCP, We recognize the attendance of the PSA. PSA is the Philippine Statistics Authority. Are you around? Uh, PSA? Director Lutubice. Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, Senator Tomentino. I have two questions. Uh, I have two questions. One concerning this measure, uh, whether you are in concurrence or not. Number two, are you done with the census? And uh, if you're done with the census, when will the census results be out? Uh, Director Lod Lodobice. Okay, uh, good morning again. Uh, with regards to the uh, uh, concurrence to the bill, uh, we usually do not, uh, <clears throat> do not uh, interpose ob objection uh, as to the number of population count because our only Uh, function, uh, our only uh, role here is to provide population. So whatever is the uh, population requirement, then uh, we are bound to uh, provide you with the latest population count based on the latest census. Uh, with regard to sa, uh, tw uh, 2020 uh, census of population housing, it's just been delayed uh, due to uh, COVID-19. Uh, So our uh, COVID, uh, yeah, COVID-19. So actually, uh, as of now, uh, we're still uh, having some uh, saturation drive in uh, highly urbanized uh, areas, particularly uh, here in Metro Manila. But uh, we expect to uh, release uh, uh, the population count uh, by by second quarter of this year, 
and still we have to submit uh, we 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 have to submit the uh, population count to the office of the president for proclamation as official. So uh, unless unless the uh, population count is uh, uh, certified as official by the office of the president, then uh, we cannot release the population count based on the 2020 census. So uh, hopefully by second quarter of this year or first half of this year, uh, we will be able to release the uh, results of the uh, 2020 uh, census of population housing. That's all. Uh, can, you can you repeat that? You cannot release the population count unless you have a go signal from the office of the president. Is it confidential? Yes. Because yes. population yes. count is uh, for planning purposes. We need that for budget preparations. We need that yes. for COMELEC preparations. Bakit sikreto na yung population natin? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, yes, Your Honor. But it is, it is in the law that uh, uh, the population, uh, the result of the population count sh should be uh, should be certified uh, as official by the president. Only the population count uh, for purposes of uh, it is in Batas Pampansa 75, uh, 75 which says that uh, which says a provision that uh, the population need, really needs to be uh, certified by the president before it becomes official. Medyo magulo yun, Director. I, I don't want to argue with that. Uh... You yes. expect to you expect that to be released by the second quarter, but we we are on the verge of uh, dispensing vaccines. Uh, in so far as the Department of Health is concerned, so it might not match with the with the population count. Uh, I'm referring to the number of vaccines to be to be disposed. Uh, it might not match uh, number of senior citizens, number of. Uh, uh, residents of Metro Manila, etc., etc. So, pakiaral nga uli yung, baka mali yung, babasahin ko rin yan, baka mali yung uh, intindi nyo na sikreto yan, kasi marami pong mga bills ngayon na, na halimbawa, yung bill na second part ng agenda natin, uh, redistricting of Kaloocan, eh baka mas lalong lumaki yung Kaloocan o nabawa, nabawasan. So, mas maganda siguro, mas maaga, marilis nyo na yan, Director uh, Lodovice. Yes, Your Honor. Actually, uh, it, it is also it is it is also our uh, desire to uh, release the population count as early as possible. Senator uh, Lacson would like yes. to ask a question. I, I would just like to be clarified. Meron po ba tayong batas na bago maging official yung census na sinasagawa ng PSA? Kailangan pang uh, isertify ng Pangulo ng Pilipinas? Yes. Kasi yes. as I understand it, ang uh, agency tasked to conduct census on population, PSA, and once it is made official by PSA, that's it. That's the official uh, number of population of the entire country and uh, the provinces, cities, municipalities, and barangays, hindi po ba? So anyway, my, my legal staff, uh, pinag-aaralan po nila kung merong, merong batas talaga na nagsasabing kailang i-certify pa ng Pangulo bago maging official yung census na sinagawa ng PSA. Meron po bang batas yan? Uh, yes, Your Honor, meron po. And we have been uh, following that law ever since. So uh, after once we have uh, finalized uh, our uh, population count, we submit uh, the population counts by Barangay to the Office of the President through the, through the National Economic and Development Authority. So we wait until the President signs. Usually it is signed by the uh, executive secretary so that is what that is what we that is what we quote when we release a uh, population count uh, we say that uh, this uh, 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 population count is certified by uh, say president uh, Duterte if, if uh, in this case uh, through a presidential uh, proclamation number and so we quote that uh, whenever we release uh, population counts. Certainly. Thank you. As it stands now, the latest census, yung official census, 2015. Yes, sir. And uh, kailangan, once every three years, nagko-conduct ng census. So medyo late tayo ng dalawang taon, kasi 2018 dapat nakapag-conduct tayo ng new census. So, and that's also the reason why yung distribution ng SAP, no? mag-divert uh, ako, mag ako ng konti. Ang ginamit na... Uh, data uh, in the distribution of SAP 2016, 
So we were talking to some local government units and uh, uh, I beg your indulgence, Mr. Chairman, nag-debate lang ng konti. Uh, sinasabi nila, yung dating walang trabaho ng 2016 na nasa listahan ng SAP, eh may mga trabaho na raw nitong nagkaroon ng pandemic. At yung iba namang may trabaho noong uh, 2015 or 2016, nawalan ng trabaho nitong uh, nagkaroon ng pandemic, hindi naman nabigyan ng SAP. So, uh, I just would like to underscore the uh, importance of updating our census in this regard, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Chair, uh, we are uh, mandated by law to conduct uh, census every five years. Po. So it's not every three years. Po. So the last time was in 2015. So just, uh, we had this uh, next census in 2020. So it's, you, that thing po, it's every 10 years, but now it has been, uh, it has been revised to have a census of population every five years. <coughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you. I stand corrected. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Lacson. Uh, Director Ludovice, I'd, I'd like to deviate again. You probably have a wrong interpretation of the law, with all due respect, mm -hmm. because you're referring to Batas Pambansa 72. Batas Pambansa 72, under Section 8, correct me if I'm wrong, ito po yung nakalagay, and I quote, Before the end of the year 1980, and every census thereafter, a count of population by the province, city, or municipality shall be published by the National Census and Statistics Office. Sa batas nga, nakalagay ang magkakaon pa yung city. The final population count, as determined from the process census returns, shall be considered official for all purposes upon proclamation by the President. So wala po nakalagay dito na bawal i-release yung census na ginawa nyo ng walang certification. Magiging official lamang pag nagkaroon ng certification ang Pangulo. Kaya po natin sinasabi ito ngayon kasi COVID tayo. Kailangan tumama po yung number ng bakunang kukunin doon sa census ninyo. Pangalawa, magpapasokan na naman sa June. Maguguluhan na naman ng DepEd. Wala pa rin kayong census. Araw-araw po, Director May Nanganak. Ang, ang sabi nga ng nagtalo kami ni Secretary Duque kasi sabi ng USEC niya, uh, pwedeng sa, uh, bakunahan yung buntis. Eh ngayon, sinasabi nila, hindi na kailangan bakunahan yung puntis, baka makasama. So lahat pong ito, kailangan natin yung datos sa paghahanda. But again, I, I think you're, you have an erroneous interpretation. Nothing prohibits you from disclosing to the cities, even to the Senate, the population count not yet official. Kung sa COMELEC nga merong unofficial returns, siguro dapat meron din kayong ganun para makapaghanda rin para makapaghanda rin kami. So having said that, I, I think uh, for projection purposes, you should inform us, this committee, ilan ba talaga, 109 million tayo, sinabi ni Senator Lacson, ilan na tayo ngayon? So sa paghahanda natin, kailangan namin yung datos sa inyo. Hindi naman po yan uh, confidential. Bago ako makatapos makasalita, siguro may apat na nanganak, nadagdagan na naman tayo, wala po yan sa census ninyo. Uh, Director, siguro at basahin niyo, patulong ka sa, sa legal mo. Any reply? Kung wala, we go to the, with the permission of Senator Lacson, we go to uh, the League of Cities of the Philippines. I, I, I see online, uh, dear colleagues, the presence of several mayors which, which I would like to acknowledge. Mayor Jerry Treña of Iloilo, Mayor Arnan Panaligan of Calapan City, Mayor Richard Gomez of Ormoc, Mayor Francis Garcia of Balanga, City Bataan, Mayor Jennifer Tan of Tangub, Mayor... Leonard Dia, the president of the league from Bacolod City, Mayor Dexter Uy from Dipolog, Mayor Stephen Palmares from Pasi Iloilo. Uh, siguro, and of course, your uh, executive director, uh, Sandra, Sandra Paredes. So who will speak on behalf of the league? Uh, is it the president, Mayor Leonard Dia? Mayong Aga? Mayor Bing, you're on mute. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Mayor Leonardia. Okay, na, Mr. Mr. Senator, Mr. Chairman, Mayor Aga. Uh, of course, we are the League of Cities of the Philippines is very pleased to be here present in this uh, committee hearing. And we're thrilled that the presiding officer is one of us. 
because uh, he's our former LCP president and on the record, he is uh, the LCP official who has achieved the highest uh, ranking ever of all the LCP officials. Congratulations, sir. I speak in behalf of the league, but um, after my statement, uh, there are mayors who will be asked to make their sentiments exp uh, likewise uh, uh, manifested. So my fellow mayors and the resource persons, well, Senator Ping Lacson, Senator Batovin de la Rosa, Senator Aimee Marcos, and all those who, who I might have missed. Uh, this is the official statement of the League of Cities of the Philippines that uh, Republic Act 9009 had already amended the local government code liberally by determining the indicators of the income requirement at 100 million pesos. And one of the physical criteria, population of 150 inhabitants or land area of 100 square kilometers. For several Congresses now, the League had consistently expressed its opposition on bills that exempt converting municipalities to the physical requirements of cityhood as it violates the equal protection clause through arbitrary preferential treatment that will inevitably result in inequitable distribution among cities of the just share in national income. It will exacerbate the fiscal imbalance within cities and it will affect cities that need the resources the most. The proposed exemption of Senate Bill 255 is passed we believe will not be a good precedent as if we make the exception as the rule, there will be the opening of the floodgates and even Pandora's box. The current conversion requirements provided for in the local government code are a valid classification that stems from Section 10, Article 10 of the Constitution, which requires Congress to provide uniform and non-discriminatory criteria in converting a local government unit. This serves as a legal cornerstone to the three verifiable indicators in Section 7 of the Local Government Code, a prudent reminder that the crucial aspects of cityhood can never be captured by a single measure alone. In the text of Senate Bill 255, that is the locally generated income of 250 million. We see the same doctrine reiterated in section 285 of the local government code, which sets the formula for the computation of the internal revenue allotment. It validates the importance of population and land area by giving it 50 and 25 percentile weight in the area distribution. Mr. Chairman, these are the basic principles, arguments, and beliefs that anchor the strong opposition of the LCP to these measures. The passage could set a precedent that we later may not be able to control. So we believe that uh, the status quo will maintain the equilibrium of local governance and that we believe that exemptions should not be made the rule. So, Mr. Chairman, may I now ask my other mayors to please uh, come into... Thank you, uh, Mayor, uh, Mayor uh, Leonardia, for purposes of uh, an orderly uh, hearing here. May, may we ask for a, a reply? coming from the, one of the authors, and probably if you can uh, give in advance the number of uh, mayors that will be speaking, uh, all of them, or uh, uh, a representative group? Uh, you're, you're... Uh, Mr. Chairman, I may just uh, make 
the, the manifestation that our executive director is Verona Hitosis. Right? Another name was mentioned earlier, and uh, she is with us. She has the record of who are supposed to speak the order of it. It's with her. Verona? So, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, probably we can, uh, for purposes of uh, orderliness here, we, we can allot them a, a minimum. How many mayors do we have here? Uh, one, two, three, there four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight mayors? You're, you're, you're mute, Ron. Yeah. So, we have eight mayors, so we give them uh, three to five minutes. Will that be sufficient? Okay, but we have uh, Senator Laxon. First, uh, having a uh, reply to your comments, uh, Mayor. Senator Laxon is recognized. I will yield to the House author, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Congresswoman Loyola is uh, recognized. Uh, the, the, the comment here uh, would center on the, the financial uh, deduction, perhaps, uh, as heard from uh, Mayor Leonardia, and the mention of the word floodgates that... Uh, Perhaps other municipalities would be uh, joining the cityhood uh, bandwagon, so to speak. Mayor, uh, Congressman Loyola is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Kaya nga po kami nag-set ng limit ng 250 million eh, para ma-prevent yung madrash ng uh, pagpasok ng iba pang municipalities. We agreed na the primordial reason for converting uh, municipalities oh, to... Uh, city is to ensure economic viability. Kinikilala po namin yung importansya ng tatlo. Pero of the three, ang primordial importance na nakikita namin po dito is the income requirement. Kasi nga po, if you have an income, income uh, level na mataas, this would trigger uh, this is a triggering point for more economic development and population will naturally increase pagka po may migration and you will create more jobs. So yun po yung uh, intention nitong bill na ito. Kaya po tinaasa namin yung income level para ma-prevent po yung madras na uh, kailangan talaga ay magkaroon ng fiscal uh, in, in, in independence ang mga na hindi lang ira-dependent ang mag apply po ng per city hood. Thank you, uh, Congresswoman uh, Loyola. I, I see now virtually Senator Marcos unless uh, you have a, a statement to insert. Uh, Senator, Senator Marcos, I me. Uh, Senator Marcos is muted. Uh, she's probably attending another committee hearing. So we, we now proceed with the executive director. Uh, so we limit the, the time uh, given to you. So executive director Veronica, Veronica you're recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the next speaker, Mr. Chair, is our public relations officer or Mock City Mayor. Um, Richard Gomez. Yes, uh, if uh, I have a, a copy of uh, our position, if uh, uh, our uh, SCP National President will uh, allow me to uh, just uh, take off on uh, some of uh, what is written here, Mr. President, Mr. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Bing. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes, Mayor. thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, centers, everyone uh, present today, uh, mayors present. Uh, the league opposes lowering the population requirement to 100,000 as contained in House Bill 8207. The league believes the current law is sufficient and generable, generally attainable for the conversion of municipalities. Section 450 already provides opportunity and leeway for municipalities to meet the city requirements since it was liberally amended to comply with the population or land area requirement. Cities with bigger population to serve need more era. There are other ways to become a city within the bounds of existing laws. There are other ways to become a city within the bounds of existing laws, municipalities, with a population of less than 150,000 inhabitants required under RA 9009 can participate in national government in other programs. Simply letting the population go, it's natural course. It will be just a matter of time for an aspiring municipality to comply 
with a population requirement. A city with a population less than what is required by RA 9009 will not meet the excess funds and will result in uneven distribution of resources. If the new city only has a small population, then land area below the current requirement, what will it do with the windfall of resources? So, sobra, sobra ho. When steering the direction of public resources, the government should be guided by the law of the numbers. May it be land, or in the case of House Bill 8207 people, House Bill 8207 will take us on the opposite course. The requirement set forth under the code, example, requiring 150,000 inhabitants is placed to ensure a city's viability and its capacity to sustain cityhood through local revenues and less dependence on ERA. It is also a challenge for a city to generate income with a low population. In effect, reducing the population requirement will also reduce the city's capability to deliver basic services. The League sees that the original requirement of 150,000 inhabitants is the minimum population required to jumpstart the city's local economy. Now, the exemption provided in uh, Senate Bill 255 will cause further fragmentation. The bills also have an unexpected backlash to bigger cities. It allows affluent barangays to cluster together to achieve the 250 million income requirement, secede and form their city. For instance, Bo, sa Makati, Barangay Bel Air, Barangay Ordaneta, Barangay North Forbes, South Forbes, can become a city as soon as, as it clusters with other barangays. Ganun din sa Quezon City. There are big barangays uh, na pwede mag-cluster. The bills may create further fragmentation. The, the sponsor of Senate Bill 255 took note of small states, specifically Monaco and San Marino. We respectfully point out that these are not analogous in Philippine municipalities and cities, particularly when these are small states in first world countries that do not operate under the same regulations imposed by the Philippine laws. Mr. Uh, Chairman, that is uh, just one part of uh, our, uh, our uh, stand in the League of Cities. I uh, submit to our uh, League President and to other uh, mayors of, uh, of the League. Thank you so thank much, you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mayor uh, Gomez. But for the record, I'd, I'd like to uh, place it on record that uh, it is not just Congresswoman Loyola, who is the author of Se uh, House Bill 8207, there are 16 congressmen uh, who authored this measure. And if I may name them, uh, they are the following. Congresswoman Loyola, Congressman Romulo of Pasig, Congressman Rimulia, Congressman Barzaga, the minority floor leader, Cong uh, the uh, Congressman Zamora of San Juan, Congressman Alonte of Laguna, Congressman Mariano Hernandez, Congressman Apo of Rizal, Congressman Ferrer of Cavite, Congressman Pimentel of Surigao, Congressman Advincula, Congressman Fernandez of uh, Laguna, Congressman Abaya, Congressman Rodriguez of Cagayan de Oro, Congressman Savillano of Ilocosur, Congressman Nieto. So 16 congressmen uh, authored uh, House House Bill 8207, which was passed uh, unanimously by the House on third reading a few weeks ago. May, may we uh, ask the League who is the next speaker for the League? Um, Mr. Chair, the next speaker is our Vice President for Visayas, Mayor Felipe Romolio. We recognize uh, the arrival of uh, Mayor. Mayor Remolio, who <laughs> celebrated his birthday a few days ago. Uh, Mayor <laughs> Remolio, you're recognized. Nakamute. Remolio of the Maguete, you're recognized. I'm going to check. I'm going to check. Yes, well, good morning, boss Francis, uh, Mr. Chair, and my colleagues in the league. Uh, uh, thank you for your greetings, but that will be still on February 13, one day short of Valentine's. Uh, so I anyway, greet you in advance. Yes, bo, yes, bo. <laughs> yes, boss. Anyway, um, <clears throat> it has always been a, uh, it's a recurring problem 
and between a passive it's a recurring problem of uh, the creation of cities while uh, and uh, while creation of cities will di directly result to the diminution of the era of the other cities it's a, it's a we, we were trying to get a, a, a permanent solution to that without a clash between uh, the uh, aspiring municipalities and uh, in and the existing cities now uh, so uh, I, i'd like uh, we are trying to propose certain uh, certain measures that would still uh, uh, it's a win-win solution that would uh, satisfy the aspiring municipalities becoming cities while uh, not uh, diminish or the or lessen or decrease the era of the existing cities so matagal na yung nagka-clash eh. ever uh, even during your incumbency as uh, uh, as the legal city president uh, Mr. Chair no so um first um it, it is uh, it is uh, posited here that maybe uh the in, the uh, the formation of a new municipality into city uh should not diminish the the era of the of the existing cities while uh, by uh, exploring other sources of uh funds that would uh, help the uh the the aspiring uh, or applicant uh, municipality into cities um uh, we propose that uh, uh, it should be taken from sources other than the the share of the existing cities now second is that and then, uh, mayor if i may interject what is your proposal uh would not the portability provision coming from senate bill 255 uh suffice uh in so far as your yeah. concern your concern is uh in so far as your concern is uh you're, yes, but then raising now. The, the, they, they will be carrying the the the, the era the they got from the municipal as a municipality uh, as they go into cityhood. Will not that be uh, sufficient, uh, Mayor? But but still, there is still the, the effect. Uh, it's not to, it's not really. Uh, it's there's still the effect on the on the era of uh, our existing cities uh, as per our uh, our research. No, it's not really totally. Uh, uh uh without any effect on the era share of the cities second a population is an indispensable when we talk of cities uh, historically it's the migration intermigration from uh, uh from a low uh, a uh, low population to a bigger population so when you talk of cities it's indispensable you, you talk of increase in population so uh, we we submit that uh, uh, the requirement on population should not be uh, uh, set aside simply because of the increase in income. Talking of increase in income, let's say two hundred fifty thousand uh, a million rather, it that the increase in income may be superficial because it can be. Uh, by reason of one big company or one big uh, uh, a group of companies that uh, that uh, that suddenly by reason of uh, whatever uh, by reason of uh, location in may increase the uh, the income of a particular municipality and that's volatile and it's not uh, it's not really uh, it's not stable because like in the case of this pandemic a company or group of companies might just uh, might just stop operation so uh, there is no permanency but when you talk of population when you talk of income um uh, again uh, like uh, for example let's say uh, a, a, uh, maybe island boracay island no it's it's uh, it's not uh, its income basically is in the uh, the revenues from the from the um, from the many uh, many uh, resorts that are located there but the population is not permanent it is the population is in and out so in that respect 
if uh, given this pandemic, that would uh, still affect the uh, affect the. Uh, it's not. Uh, it would be superficially uh, with an income of 250 million. But and and another suggestion is that uh, uh, if the intention is to uh, 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 promote or encourage cities or municipalities to to uh, to uh, uh, think of revenue generating uh, 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 measures by way of taxes might as well might as well uh, include in the in the uh, requirement that uh, or might as well increase the uh, the powers of the municipalities to to uh, to earn its uh, uh, more revenues taxing powers uh, to and including the cities as well no to uh, for us to be more or less, more or less uh, independent than uh, not relying anymore on the era from the national government. So, and uh, lastly, um, maybe the legislator should include as a as a, an additional requirement for future municipalities to become cities would be sports facilities and health facilities. These are these are indices of uh, of uh, growth and of becoming. Uh, it, it's too premature for a municipality to become a city without the much-needed health facilities and the sports facility, facility especially uh, which uh, with the experience that we are now, uh, the pandemic that we are now experiencing, that indeed health facilities are are, uh, are indispensable in any uh, for any LGU for that matter. So when you graduate from a municipality into a city, these are other things that we should be considered as well. Mr. Thank, you, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Senator Laxon is recognized. Mayor. Uh, Senator Laxon and then Senator Sige, Marcos. I'll, I'll uh, yield to Senator Marcos muna. Sige. No, no. Um, Sorry, ko lang namin yes, na rin. Uh, Magre-register present lang ako. Kalina pa ako nagbabantay. Kaya lang may kabilang uh, uh, bilang ko dun sa agriculture. Pero with the opposite way, I'd just like uh, to make a point of information that uh, in the redistricting of Kaloocan, I filed a similar measure, um, Senate Bill Number 2028, for the reapportioning of the first legislative district into two districts instead of one. I'd also like uh, to share my wholehearted support um, with the different leagues represented here and our concern that the DIG, LG and the other uh, national government agencies have uh, not paid too much attention to the uh, major tectonic shift that will occur with the uh, implementation of the Mandanas ruling, which we filed as uh, governors and won and will very, very soon be fully implemented. It's vital that we start studying these aspects, given the completely dismal performance of devolution in the DA and in the DOH. Thank you, Senator Ping. Uh, thank you, Senator Marcos. Uh, uh, thank you for informing us of that slight oversight. We should have included your uh, measure as part of uh, agenda number two. Uh, in considering the reapportionment re of the first district of Kalaokan City. We will tackle that together with uh, House Bill 7700. Thank you, uh, Senator Marcos. Mr. Chairman. Senator Laxon, Yes, uh, thank you. I'd like to react and uh, ask uh, Mayor Remolio, you know, because he mentioned population as a major factor in the discussion of the issue at hand. You know. uh, don't you think, Mayor, that the income level as a trigger point for economic development uh, would attract migration and thus population will uh, uh, subsequently increase uh, if the economic development uh, is triggered by the income level of a certain uh, uh, municipality or a certain local government unit for that matter. Uh, Mayor Remolio, are you on mute? We, we cannot hear you, we cannot hear you. Ang, ang tanong ni Senator Laxon, parang ganito, if I may rephrase, uh, with the permission of Senator Laxon, hindi ba pag mataas yung income, 
pag mataas yung income, mas makaka-attract pa ng migration, in-migration, dahil maraming services, maraming opportunities, lalaki rin yung population. Parang ganun yung uh, uh, rephrased, uh, reframe argument ni Senator Langson. Just to clarify where I'm, where I'm uh, coming from, ano, Mayor. Kasi yes, kung, uh, gagawin natin okay. indispensable talaga yung population in the determination of... Uh, Uh, cityhood no, proposals, then parang inalisan na natin ng uh, karapatan yung uh, municipality na mataas yung income level na nag attract ng uh, economic development or nag ng development. So, mawawala yung opportunity to attract migration thus increasing their population. So, mukhang yung uh, sinasabi ko rito, yung, yung income level uh, magiging function yung population do sa income uh, or vice, uh, the other way around ano yung yung population is a function of the income level so hindi indispensable yung population uh, dapat itong consider as a primordial concern yung income level ng municipality uh, for purposes of cityhood thank you anybody from the LCP would like to answer that uh, Mr. Chair, the question is uh, yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, it could, it really depends on the how the income and what what uh, what form of activity was the income uh, derived from. It it in in all likelihood, it's the population the population growth that uh, that uh, may have caused the increase of income. It it could it could be either way, so it's not always a true that the although the, the income uh, uh, it's, it may be true that income will attract if only if this uh, income uh, uh, is derived from uh, uh, business activities that would uh, attract population. Because if this income is not uh, on a business activity or uh, any activity that, uh, that will be labor intensive, it will not be true. On the other hand, if uh, uh, if there will be more population, that could have been that cause, that could have been a trigger for the increase in income. So uh, we cannot we cannot totally agree with that. That it's a it's a it's a logical. It could be either way. Thank you. Uh, with all due respect, you, Mr. Lacroix. Mayor, pagka may income, yung income level mataas, yempre, yung economic development mataas then, or yung activities ng uh, ng business, no, business activities that would trigger the economic development, and therefore, ito yung aking theory, no. Ito yung mag-a-attract na migration because there are many business opportunities, job opportunities in that particular area. It's not the other way around. It doesn't necessarily mean na pag mataas yung population, eh, mag eh tataas yung income ng uh, isang uh, LGU. Anyway, uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, may we uh, uh, hear from uh, Mayor Loyola. Thank you. Loyola is very nice. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Ping Lacson. With your respect to Mayor Romulio, Uh, I beg to disagree to his uh, statement because in so far as Carmon is concerned, uh, we have a small population, but we have a locally generated uh, income of more than 400 million, and it's based on the industrialization, commercialization, and uh, uh, in the locality. Uh, we were able to introduce a lot of uh, mechanism to attract investor, not the uh, population. As a matter of fact, in Carmona, we control and regulate the migration. We are more often on commercialization and industrialization, not subdivision. And that's the reason why Carmona uh, was able to generate locally generated income Up more than 400 million and it increased every year. That will be all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor.
ako po naka naka as chair nakabalanse po ako dito pero uh, siguro yung usapin natin more on academic po yung iba uh, tama po lahat yan kagaya po sa siguro sa Dumaguete uh, marami kayo na attract na tao because of the presence of Siliman University as an educational as a prime educational institution uh, so na nakaka-generate kayo ng maraming tao eventually magkakaroon din ng maraming income kasi maraming boarding house maraming uh, magtatayo ng coffee shop tapos uh, maayos yung peace and order so iba't iba po siguro sa bawat LGU so ito nagpapatunay na yung attraction to generate population uh, to generate more income connected po lahat yan uh, we, will not, we will not deal with that kanya-kanyang attraction yan lalo na sa si mayor ng Tangub uh, pag Disyembre meron silang Christmas festival so marami ring turista ron uh, na pumupunta Ma marami ganun din sa Mascara festival so kanya-kanya pong attraction yan uh, may we now hear from the other mayors uh, ilan pa ba natitiran uh, Mr. Chair, we only have two. We only have two, two, two more. Step here. Two, just two more. Two. Okay. I like to. Uh, we'll have, uh, uh, we'll have uh, the regional representative, Mr. Chair. Our uh, regional Hello? representative for region. Uh, major, Mayor regional. Jenny Tan. Yeah, Mayor Jenny Tan. To, uh, to appeal po the, the sentiments of smaller uh, cities that will be affected by, by these bills. Mayor Jenny. Mayor Jenny of Tangub is recognized. Mayang uh, Adlao, Satanan. Good morning, everyone, and of course, to all our senators, our good friends there, and we have been supporting them uh, in all the bills that they have been submitting. Maraming salamat po sa pagkakataon na ito na binigay po sa inyo, uh, sa amin, mga taga-LCP. There are just some few pointers that I just like would like to uh, express now from the LCP. First is, uh, we oppose the lowering of the population requirement from 150,000 to 100,000. A city with 100,000 population will have no need for the excess in funds, as this will result, of course, to an irregular distribution of resources, as mentioned a while ago by Mayor Gomez and uh, by Mayor Ipe Rimolio. And of course, this also creates an impression of a forced cities uh, with high capacity to spend, but with meager population to spend its resources. Of course, we don't all devalue what Carmona has done. And we are very proud of these uh, municipalities who have really gone a long way in, in their, in their uh, journey to becoming a, a city. However, these are things that are also the sentiments of, of the smaller cities in the LCP. And the second point that we also would like to uh, raise up, we proposed uh, the use of the word and, not or, in the a requirement for population and land area and the irreportability. Wala naman po kaming opposition doon sa irreportability. We are, we're okay with it. On the third point, uh, example ko lang po ito. Uh, ako, mother ako, no? Ina ako. Um, when a mother gives birth to many children, that mother will likely not be able to feed all her children. And kung ang pamilya nga ay may family planning, Dapat sana sa cities, meron din tayong family planning sa mga syudad. And of course, on the fifth point, uh, we seek for a moratorium on the conversion of cities. Hindi na akma sa panahon. Uh, we are now in a state of pandemic and all the budgets of the cities, kahit gaano pa kaliit ang mawala o mak makunan sa isang syudad, may epekto pa rin ito. And of course, all the existing cities, its AIP for the next year are already laid out, especially its budget on COVID-19 deployment of vaccines. Makaka problema talaga, kahit pagaano kayo. So moratorium lang ang inihingi namin. And of course, on the sixth point, uh, for purposes of future consideration, we have nothing. We don't oppose in the conversion, but we call also for a separate budget for those new cities and must not be taken from the budget of the existing cities. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Mayor Jenny. Uh, the last mayor to speak is uh, Mayor... Who is the last mayor to speak? Uh, sir, we will give you... Yeah, yeah, Mr. Chair, we will deliver our concluding statements. Um, our Vice President for Luzon, uh, Balanga City Mayor Francis S. Garcia, sir. 
Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Mayor uh, Garcia of Balanga is recognized. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, Senator and Chairman Tolentino, uh, Senator Laxon, Senator Marcos, Senator De La Rosa, uh, Congresswoman Loyola, Congressman Malapitan, my fellow mayors led by LCP President uh, Bing Leonardia, and of course all our other resource persons. Uh, dear Senators, as mentioned by Mayor Gomez earlier, one of our main concerns about these bills is the possible fragmentation of big cities, especially in Metro Manila, with the reduced population requirement for cityhood. For example, rich barangays in Quezon City or Makati can now get together with just one or two other barangays to achieve the 100,000 population requirement. It makes it a lot easier, for example, if you have a congressman in league with some barangay captains and are against a big city mayor, it will be so much easier with the reduced requirements to file for their cityhood and really cause chaos in their city, in the House of Representatives, of course, in the Senate and the nation as a whole. So actually, not just two or three municipalities are affected by this bill, but so are all our big cities in the Philippines where a cluster of barangays can possibly get together and form a city of their own under the relaxed requirements of this bill. As a general matter, also requirements for cityhood should be increasing and not decreasing. For example, in the previous amendment, the amount of income was increased to account for inflation. Here we have the opposite. We are lowering the population requirement so that a rich municipality can become a city. Uh, so taking into account the population growth, ang kantumpas po ng 100,000 population now is only about 70,000 population 20 years ago. Maybe not what the authors of the local government code had in mind. As the DILG mentioned earlier, there are probably many municipalities who are on the verge of achieving 100,000 population who may have or soon have also the required income uh, who would be uh, eligible to become a city under these bills. And lastly, Your Honor, by lowering the population requirement, you have a rich, a very successful town. Uh, again, kudos to uh, Mayor Loyola, uh, who actually doesn't need as much the funds uh, with its lower population to become a city. So it's like giving more money uh, to the rich and decreasing from other cities with more area and more population who desperately needs the funds, especially during this prolonged uh, pandemic. We all know how difficult it is to overturn a bill or law that has possibly unintended consequences once it is passed. And we should really consider all the possible ramifications of this bill. Uh, this isn't really just one town becoming a city, but it affects so much more than that. and affects all cities, especially the big cities uh, in our great nation. Together with then LCP President uh, and Mayor Ed Pamintuan, we as a large group of city mayors attended the scheduled third reading of these bills in the Senate in the last Congress. And we hope that all our concerns may be considered again, led by our president now, uh, LCP President Bing Leonardia, uh, during this Congress. Thank you so much again for letting us voice our concerns. And good morning, Uli po sa lahat. Thank you, uh, Mayor Garcia. May ito kayo. Uh, is there any response? Uh, I recognize Senator uh, uh, Mayor Loyola. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Senator Ping Lakson. With due respect to the members of the League of City, I uh, just, uh, just want to emphasize that there were chartered cities created by law. And most of them has no population, has not complied to the population requirement. And the legislator, when they crafted that uh, law in creating that city, it is not the population that was taken into consideration, but the potentiality, capability of that area of becoming a city. I cannot mention all, but I can name some few, but uh, like San Juan. San Juan has a total population of 122,000, if I'm not mistaken. As of 20, yeah. Yeah. So it, it's very clear that population is not an important requirement for conversion of a municipality into city. When it comes to the issue of pandemic, it's only temporary. 
sooner or later we will be able to overcome this pandemic and we will be returning back to our normal life, normal operations of each and every municipality and city and province in the country. Well, with regards to excess money, if ever uh, uh, Carmona will be converted in city, it's not true. There's no such city or municipality that has excess money. Every time there's an uh, income generated by a local government, it will be used and spent based on the needs of its constituent and the plans and program for more economic development. Converting a municipality in city like Carmona will open a high, a great economic development, which means more business, increase in the national taxes, more employment. We will be able to contribute more, not only to the people of Carmona, but to the entire country. The intention of the law, the spirit and intention of law in creating a LGU is to become self-reliant, to be able to provide government services and facilities and not to, and not to be dependent on the era for its operation. That is the stand, Mr. Chair, of this summary representation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mayor Loyola. With the permission of my colleagues, can I ask Ma Mayor Loyola some questions? So, where we are, the 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 point of contention here is Section 450 of Republic Act 7160, the Local Government Code. Question. Is Congress allowed to amend Section 450 of the Local Government Code? I've heard. Is Congress allowed to amend Section 450 of the e Local e Government e Code? E yes, Mr. Chair, there's no permanent law. Permanent. All laws are subject to amendment, repeal, and revision, subject to the needs of time. And can Congress provide an exception to sec Section 450 of the Yes, Local Mr. Government Chair. Code? Can Congress amend Section 450 by lowering the threshold amount of 100 million, perhaps to 80 million or 95 million? Yes, Mr. Chair. Can Congress increase to yes, 150 million or even 1 billion? Yes, Mr. Chair. You're right. But is Congress allowed to... Can Congress amend provisions which cannot be increased. For instance, I, I don't think it, for instance, it will be allowed uh, mayor, it, Mr. Uh, this is my question. Can Congress make the population requirement 200,000? 200, uh, yes, is Congress Mr. allowed to do yes, that? Yes, Mr. Chair. But is Congress limited by restrictions which it can no longer amend. For instance, can Congress make the land area requirement to 200,000 200, square kilometers? Well, Mr. Chair, there is no permanent law. All laws are subject to repeal, no, but how revision, can, and amendment. How can you comply with a an increased land requirement if the land will not increase? <laughs> yes, Mr. Chair. You're right, Mr. Chair. If the land area of a locality is determined by the Land, land Management land. Bureau, can Congress, through a law, increase it? I, I'm referring to a very peculiar situation uh, and, for, and for the... Uh, information of our resource persons. I was chairman before of Metro Manila. There is only one LGU in Metro Manila, which is not a city, Pateros. And do you know the land area of Pateros is just 10 square kilometers? Forever it will not be a city if we follow the, the provisions of Section 450. It will not be a city. 
because it is just 10 square kilometers and yet it is bounded by Makati, which is a highly urbanized city. It is bounded by BGC, which is uh, one of the prime areas now of the country. And it is in Metro Manila. The only municipality in Metro Manila is Pateros. So are you saying, Mr. Mayor, that because of uh, this restriction, Pateros will no longer become a city? Never, never in 100 years, never in two centuries. It will remain Pateros, the birthplace of Balot, the birthplace of uh, several heroes. Well, uh, Mr. Chair, the Congress can do anything to amend the law in order for Pateros to become a city now or in the future. The, la the population of Pateros is 63,840. It will no longer increase, but Pateros is in the middle of Metro Manila. In the, it's part of the, part of the metropolis uh, near the airport and everything, but it will remain a, a municipality. Uh, is that my correct reading of existing laws, uh, Mr. Mayor? So wala tayong magagawa doon? Meron po, meron po. Amenda so, lang natin patas. Amenda patas? O uh, para maging city ang Pateros. Because of the peculiar nature that Pateros is within Metro Manila. Yes, Mr. Chair. So Pateros City, alam nyo? What is important, Mr. Chair, is the ability, the capability of certain LGU to perform uh, the to perform and provide basic services and government facilities is constituent as compared as compared to the city. So it's the services, not the legal requirements. Yes, and Mr. I'm referring to Pateros again, and, and I'd like to place this on record. Alam niyo po, Mr. Mayor, yung Pateros, kahit maliit na munisipyo, merong isang munisipyo na ginawang city, and you can Google this, ginawang city, ginaya yung pangalan ng Pateros, and it's called the City of Pateros, Washington State, USA. Pinangalan nila sa Pateros. Yung si Pateros na ginaya ay munisipyo pa, yung Pateros sa, sa Washington State is a city. Do you believe that? Can you believe that? Yes, Mr. Chair. Very similar to Trece Barter City, Mr. Chair. Trece Barter City was a chartered city with, I think at that time, was only 10,000 population or less. And, uh, as no income, and yet it was uh, became a city and became the capital of Trece Martyr City. Even Cavite City at that time was created with with less population, Mr. Chair. But because the Sangli points there, it was created a city. So it was not based on population, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So what you're saying now is that uh, there is a need for a new classification? O baguhin talaga? Nakikinig yung mga LCP mayors kung, nan, kung nandito lang ito sa harap natin ngayon. Uh, baka hindi na ako pinatayo nila. Well, uh, uh, what we need is an exception, Mr. Chair. Just like... Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, kasi si Mayor Loyola mentioned Tresi Martyr City. Nawalang sufficient income and yet naging city. But that was before the passage of the local government code. No, hindi na po pwede yun because ito, Section 450 as mentioned by the Chair. Ano? Ang sinasabi rito, a municipality or a cluster of barangays may be converted into a component city if it has a locally generated average annual income. Well, nagsimula sa 20 million, naging 100 million. Pero ito yung uh, operative word. Ano? And if it has either of the following requisites, meaning yung income is a must. Yun ang talagang uh, primordial, kanina pa natin sinasabi. Yung dalawa, either or eh. So, yung uh, population is just one of two. Pero yung talagang requirement under Section 450 of the Local Government Code, meaning the framers of the Local Government Code, inisip na nila talagang pinaka-importante yung income. Kasi nga, economic viability, uh, delivery of basic services to the inhabitants. So, pwede natin talagang galawin yung area at saka yung population, but not the income uh, in compliance with the intent of the local government code. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for clarifying that, uh, Senator Lacson. The, the, the next agenda after this 
would, would be the reapportionment or the redistricting of the first district of uh, Kaloocan. And in Kaloocan, correct me if I'm wrong, Mayor Malapitan is online uh, virtually. There is one barangay there. Barangay Bagong Silang. Population is 700,000, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, barangay Bagong Silang. Uh, laki po nung Bagong Silang. And, and if uh, population is really uh, vital, baka mamaya tanongin ko si Mayor Malapitan, gawin na lang natin city yung, o munisipyo yung Bagong Silang. So, yung Bagong Silang po, 24 hours. Yung mga tao, nasa kalye lahat. Uh, ganun karami po yung tao. So we leave that to, uh, for the next uh, agenda. But uh, right now, we'd like to hear a word from the League of Provinces of the Philippines, LPP. Uh, yes, LPP. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, natawag kitang LCP kanina, Director of Paredes. Yes, Go ahead. I was about to correct it. Uh, Governor Velasco uh, uh, was not, is not able to attend, but he we already discussed this. Uh, we we during the time of Governor Bichara as our president, our chairman of the league, we already supported the position of the League of Cities. Uh, but let me just uh, uh, make some clarification because we also did our own pencil pushing, and based on the 2018 statement of receipts and expenditures data of the Department of Finance (BLGF), uh, we uh, we. We saw that there are about 26 municipalities that uh, may uh, qualify for the 250 million uh, require, uh, threshold. And this will affect uh, 26, uh, about 20 provinces. And uh, ang effect po sa amin, Senator, would be the local revenues because uh, if these municipalities are converted to a city, then uh, the provinces will stand to lose, the, the affected provinces will stand to lose uh, their 20% mandatory share of the real property tax being collected by, uh, as kasi sa, under the code, 20% po sa provinces, 40% dun sa municipality, and the rest po sa barangay. So, maapektuhan po kami doon. And uh, let me cite a case in point, for example, in, in Cavite alone, yung pong papit natin. Sa Cavite po, uh, there are about three, uh, well, sa number of municipalities po, uh, per, our, per the statement of receipts and expenditures, which we will submit our position paper. This is just factual. For 250 million and above, there are 15 municipalities based on 2018 uh, report statement of receipts and expenditures financial report for one for 100 million to 250 million there are 61 municipalities so by the time by 2022 ito pong 15 can increase to more um, municipalities by that time so uh, magiging uh, malaki po impact actually more sa league of cities because of the equal sharing formula <laughs> Uh, that uh, uh, will be a consequence of that. So, for example, uh, for 2018, the equal sharing of cities would be uh, is 257 million uh, between the 146 cities. So, if you increase that to about let's say 186 cities, may mga 40 plus na mako convert, ang equal sharing na lang po nila would be 201 million. And similarly, sa real property tax namin. Malakrip mong kabawasan sa mga probinsya yan, uh, Senator. Uh, but of course, uh, we, we, we also do not want to stand uh, sa the, uh, yung pong progress ng mga municipalities like Carmona. But like San Juan City, uh, Congress, it is within the Congress power. We acknowledge that, that you can uh, amend any part, portion or provision of the local government code. Uh, on a prospective uh, basis, even for the land area, basta prospective. Uh, like San Juan, hindi naman din sila nag-qualify sa two other factors, but nevertheless, they become a they became a city. Similarly for Patero, sana nga po, kung, kung pwedeng may special charter na lang ang Pateros para wala na rin share ang MMDA sa ira dyan. Kasi yung 
may MMDA era po dyan kinocompute yung kanilang land area and population based on taqueros. So, ang isa pa hong namin ano, dun sa era portability, Senator, of course, the, that will have to change. It's now a uh, national tax allotment. It's no longer era pursuant to the Supreme Court uh, ruling. And, and we want to be clarified uh, that the bill does not uh, expressly provide any provisions on how this uh, NTA portability will be applied. Is it just for the initial year or will it be up to three years to question the impact? Uh, of the conversions. So yan po yung mga tanong namin, um, uh, Mr. Senator, also on the, uh, the, not only Section 450 of the code will be affected, but there are other provisions like the formula uh, of the, the era formula or Section 286 uh, na, na maapektuhan din yan kung, kung three years yung effectivity ng portability. So, there would be a necessary amendment to the said provision in the formula. So we want to be clarified with that for, uh, as to the policy guidelines so that it, we will not leave it to the IRR. Uh, they, 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 they must, it must pass, the legislation must pass the completeness test for the policy to be uh, implement, uh, effectively implemented. Um, aside from that, Mr. Chair, we would like to uh, also be uh, actively involved in the computation of the BIR for the for the NTA share of the LGUs because of course there should be transparency in the computation because this will uh, prospectively affect affect our uh, share and we, have, we want to be assured that the the Supreme Court uh, ruling will be uh, fully implemented by 2022. Uh, kasi po, uh, actually, the basis for the share uh, for 2022 is already computed. Meron na pong certification ng BIR and BOC for 2019. So we can, they can already compute that, Senator. Uh, uh, yun lang po ang aming initial comments. And uh, we will be having our General Assembly meeting tomorrow on the vaccines, but definitely we included this bill in our agenda so that uh, other governors can likewise uh, add some more inputs. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director uh, Paredes. Uh, Senator Lapson would like to reply. Yeah. We're all from Cavite, no? Senator Tolentino, Congresswoman Loyola, Mayor Loyola. Pero medyo ligaw ako sa 15 more municipalities can avail of the uh, cityhood uh, opportunity dahil sa more than 250. Can you enlighten uh, the committee in this regard? Uh, yes, uh, Senator. Uh, I, I just downloaded the data from the Department of Finance. They have this uh, statement of receipts and expenditures of all local government units, well, provinces, cities, and municipalities. Of course, we do not have data for the barangays. And that's another thing. We don't know how many barangays can qualify. Uh, for the uh, for the municipalities, this is just factual based on that. But of course, it's a two-year average, so hindi pa compute ng BLGF. But relying solely on the data of 2018 fiscal year, uh, based okay. on thank their you. submission. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Director. May we hear from the, the BLGF, uh, Mr. Chairman, okay. just to validate? Because uh, kung totoo yung sinasabi ni uh, Director Paredes or Executive Director, medyo alarming ito, ah. And this is something new to us, or to me, for that matter. So may we hear from uh, BLGF? BLGF, you're recognized. Mr. Chairperson, BLGF po again. We would like to clarify how we compute based on the proposal. Let's all take note that the proposal is increasing the threshold to $250 million based on 2012 constant prices. That means, Mr. Chairperson, the 250 million must, must be at 2012 level. So if the proposal is at 2020, we will have to get, to get the 2018 and 2019 uh, reports of the LGUs. But given that, it will no longer be 250 million because of the index that we use. That means 250 million in 2018 will now go up to 293.25 in 
And in 2019, it will go up to 300.50. That means if you average the two, Mr. Chairperson, you will be needing 296.88 million. That's the reason why from the 26 numbers that uh, uh, Executive Director Sandy Paredes have mentioned, it will now be lower to a number of LGUs based on the indexing. Thank you. That, this is because of the 5% incremental increase as required under the measure. We are not yet adding the 5%, Mr. Chairperson. In BIPA. Okay. So that so will also yon, have an pa. Correct, Mr. Okay. Thank uh, you for Senator. the clarification. Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Yung pong sinasabi ni ma'am that there will be additional 15 municipalities that are qualified to apply for cityhood. Ay pong 15 sinasabi niya municipality can uh, apply for cityhood without using this bill or apply uh, availing of this bill uh, because they are uh, compliant with the population land area and income requirement of 100 million. So with or without this uh, bill under consideration, those municipalities mentioned are qualified to become city. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, may we remind other, the other resource persons that we have another bill to tackle. Uh, that's the Caloocan uh, redistricting bill. I was informed that uh, two mayors would like to uh, issue statements. Uh, may, may we, may we, may we limit them with all due respect to uh, two minutes? Uh, Mayor Panaligan of Calapan and uh, Mayor Richard Gomez, so we can proceed with the Caloocan redistricting agenda because uh, the, the mayor of Caloocan has been waiting also for the last two hours. So, Mayor Panaligan. And then Mayor uh, Richard Gomez. Mayor Panaligan, you're recognized. Thereafter, we will wrap up the agenda number one. It's not, it's no longer around. Uh, uh, Mayor Panaligan, you're, uh, you're mobile. Oh, okay. we cannot hear you. You, you. Can you unmute? We cannot hear you. We can we cannot hear you. Are you driving, Mayor Panaligan? That, that's uh, very risky. Uh, you you have to unmute. I think you're driving. That's uh. Are you on a ferry or you're uh, driving on land? <coughs> I think you have to stop. Stop the boat. We cannot hear you, Mayor. I think we should go to Mayor uh, Gomez because we cannot hear you. I'm sorry, Ms. Uh, Mayor Panaligan. We cannot hear you. Although we'd like to accommodate you, we cannot hear you. Uh, what, what is being shown are your bugs. And luggages. Mayor Gomez, uh, you can proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there, are, there are 32 qualified municipalities under RA 9009. Now, there will be eight municipalities that will pass with only 100 uh, square kilometers land area requirement. And there will be nine municipalities that will pass with only 150,000 inhabitants. Mr. Chairman, we understand that Congress and Senate can uh, can create any law it wishes to. You know, times have changed and will continue continuously change. Like what the uh, Senator Laxon said, income is important. Yes, it is very important. Now, what will happen to existing cities? Na mababawasan yung national share ng city nila kapag nagdagdag pa tayo, magdagdag tayo ng city. So, Mr. Chairman, Yung tulong ng gobyerno na bigay sila ng pondo ng one month uh, from uh, our era sa Bayanihan 1, ang laking tulong ng ginawa nun sa COVID operations natin. Most CPs did not get anything from the funds coming from the Bayanihan 2. Mr. Chairman, if there is a uh, suggestion that I'd like to make, 
this is not uh, the stand of the LCP, but this is my personal stand. Uh, again, times are changing. Uh, even the small uh, municipalities are, are earning well. In Ormoc City, we are about 630 square kilometers. We are almost the size of Metro Manila. And yet we only have three police stations in the whole city of Ormoc. We only have seven ambulances. We only have five uh, patrol cars roaming the whole city of Ormoc City. Nakasinlaki ng Metro Manila. Kung mababawas ang paho yung aming share, dahil magdadagdag tayo ng city and eventually, mukhang madadagdagan pa tayo, talagang may hirapan po, hindi lang po kami. How about the bigger cities na, na konti lang yung share? Now, my suggestion is really to increase the, to increase, uh, the requirements for, for income. No? In fact, in, in the time will come, 500 million kaya nang abutin ng mga, ng mga munisipyo yan. Population will even have to to uh, increase it, no? And the existing of 150,000 uh, people, or maybe uh, we can have a moratorium from this conversion. Thank you so much, Mr. Center. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Because uh, Mayor Gomez, uh, I think we have considered all the the opinions, the statements coming from our resource persons coming from the authors of the measures. Uh, we would just like to remind those who promised to submit their position papers, League of Provinces of the Philippines. Uh, can we have that uh, this week? Uh, can we have the position paper of the BIR and the Bureau of Local Government uh, Finance, as well as uh, PSA? Uh, yeah, the request of the, the chair is that you reconsider, uh, study, evaluate your current position, that you are not, not allowed to release the, the census uh, without a certification from the president. That is not uh, found in the law that I read a while ago. Uh, we have to get the position paper, likewise, of the amended position paper of uh, the ILG, if you have any. And I, I, I thank all the resource persons present here, my former colleagues coming from the LCP uh, for raising your uh, positions, uh, objections, uh, and other matters. But we, we will have to tackle another measure, uh, which I think will not be that controversial, the Kaloocan redistricting uh, bill. The committee will convene and thereafter decide whether uh, to submit this uh, to the plenary, considering the position papers submitted, as well as the documents on file coming from the 17th Congress, because Mr. this Chairman. was already tackled during the 17th Congress. I hear a voice. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. This, yes, yes. This is Mayor uh, Bing. Mayor Leonard Villa. Uh, I know where. Uh, briefly. Yes. I know time is not on our side, but uh, may we just ex make this manifestation that uh, the LCP uh, we'll continue to research on this and we will give you another position paper. And uh, for sure, if had this been under ordinary times, there would have been many, many mayors who would have attended this. And uh, we subscribe knowing that you've been our LCP president and you have a very good comprehension of the nuances of, good, of local governance. We trust uh, we will trust in your wisdom and judgment. And uh, yes, uh, we will make our position very, very clear very soon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, uh, thank you, Mayor Bing. Uh, so we, we expect your position paper uh, perhaps in 10 days' time. Can, can we do that? The updated yes. position paper about the League of Cities of the Philippines. Uh, yes. You can have a, a Zoom meeting. Having considered all of this, the chair will now... Uh, convene the Committee on Local Government and thereafter uh, decide whether to submit this to the plenary and consideration of agenda number one, the twin measures, is now uh, terminated. Other objections coming from the committee? Hearing none, the same is referred to the committee uh, as a whole, uh, the Committee on Local Government. We now proceed to the Kaloocan redistricting bill. Uh, the mayor of Kaloocan is here, the congressman of Kaloocan briefly the Caloocan redistricting bill would reapportion the first legislative district of Caloocan into two legislative districts. And this was filed by Congressman Malapitan, uh, Deputy Speaker Villanueva, Congressman Rivera, 
Congressman uh, Sabiliano and several other congressmen. Congressman. So the purpose of the measure is to divide uh, 1st District of Caloocan into two congressional districts. Uh, may we hear from the uh, author of the measure, Congressman uh, Malapitan, uh, if, uh, if he has any opening statement. But uh, we'd like, before that, we'd like to thank the Mayor of Carmona, the Congressman of Carmona, for, phys for being physically present. But for the record, the first statement made by Senator Marcos, her, her bill, Senate Bill 2028, uh, although I mentioned this a while ago, she had to be referred to this committee. Uh, Senator Marcos, if you're around. So uh, thank you, Mayor Loyola. Thank you, Congressman Loyola. So we tackle uh, the redistricting bill. Uh, Congressman Malapitan, you have the floor. For your Mr. Talib, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Congressman Dale Malapitan. We cannot hear you, Congressman Malapitan. You, uh, you please uh, unmute. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Ahead. Chair, uh, Senator uh, Francis Valentino. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Ating uh, Senador, Senator Lacson, Senator Marcos, and Senator De La Rosa. Uh, Siyempre, ang pinag... Uh, Ganun din ang ating pagpapasalamat sa mga panauhin na nagsipagdalo sa pagdinig ng araw na ito. Mr. Chair, in the essence of time, let me just point out some few important facts pertaining to the proposed measure which uh, serve as the underlying grounds and justifications in filing thereof. First, uh, House Bill Number 7700 seeks to reapportion the first legislative district of Caloocan City only. In other words, it does not in any way covers the existing second legislative district, which shall remain intact and unaffected by this proposed bill. Second, based on the 2015 census of population conducted by the Philippine Statistic Authority, or PSA, the first district of Caloocan City has a total population of 1,193,419, which is equivalent to 75.34% of the entire population of Caloocan City. Third, that the respective population of the proposed districts under House Bill number 7700 meets the required number of inhabitants of 250,000 as provided in paragraph 3, section 5, article 6 of the 1987 Constitution. We have provided the committee via email a copy of the PSA certification and population count, which attested the veracity of the foregoing fact. And fourth, Mr. Chair, that while we are putting forward to the matter of population requirement, we are also guided by the words of the Supreme Court in the case of Mariana Jr. versus Comilek and Aquino III versus Comilek, when the highest court clearly states that there is no specific provision in the Constitution that fixes a 250,000 minimum population that must compose a legislative district. In determination of the precise district within the province to which, through the use of the population benchmark, so many districts have been approved Portion. Population as a factor was not the sole, though it was among several determinants. Thus, Your Honors, when we crafted House Bill Number 7700, we also took into consideration the sentiments of our people, their shared interests and commonalities, their socioeconomic, historical, and cultural affinity, as well as the wisdom of our local leaders. Finally, Your Honors, it is also noteworthy to mention that the, that the third legislative district that will be created as a result of the reapportionment of the first legislative district possesses all the qualifications and attributes specified by the Supreme Court in the case of Bagub uh, Bagubayo versus Comilek. It said, to ensure quality representation through commonality of interest and ease of access, 
by the representative to the constituent, all that the constitution requires is that every legislative district should comprise as far as practicable, contiguous, compact, and adjacent territory. Your Honours, given the overwhelming approval of the members of the House of Representatives on House Bill Number 7700, my firm belief that this proposed bill suffers no legal nor constitutional infirmities. This humble representation, therefore, most respectfully pray for your valued support to this piece of legislation. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, uh, Congressman Malapitan. Uh, if Senator Lacson has a statement to to make, uh, Senator Lacson, you're right. None, Mr. Chairman, except that uh, I'm supporting the uh, measure. Thank you. Senator De La Rosa, you have a statement. Uh, I'm sure the Northern Police District, uh, during your watch, uh, was very busy in this uh, in this area. Senator De La Rosa. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I fully support this measure. Uh, alam kong kinakailangan na talaga ito sa panahon na ito. So, yan lang kong Mr. Chairman. Uh, maraming salamat. Th thank you, Senator De La Rosa. I, I have some uh, point blank questions to, to Congressman Malapitan. Ngayon po, Ang hatiin natin ay yung District 1. Ilan po ang yes. populasyon nule ng District 1? District 1, Mr. Chair, is total population is 1,193,400 uh, So ang isang congressional district ngayon sa sa tradisyon kahit wala sa saligang batas ay 250,000. Yes, Mr. Chair. So ito pong distrito nga hatiin natin, pwede pa ho natin gawin tong apat na distrito? Kung Tama po kayo doon. Tama po kayo doon, Mr. Chair. So gagawin natin ngayon dalawang distrito, tigi ilan po ngayon ang populasyon pag hinati ito? Mr. Chair, pag uh, nahati po ito, the third district of Caloocan will have 300,197 population and the first district will have 893,000. So, ganun ka. Sobra-sobra po ito. Kahit uh, dito po ba yung bagong silang? Tinatanong ni Senator Lacson kanina. Bagong silang po, isasama po siya sa 1st District ng Kalaokan po. So, narinig nyo naman siguro yung, yung pabiro kong tanong kanina. Eh, bakit ayaw nyo gawing isang munisipi na lang ito? It is isang city. Gagawa tayo <laughs> ng the, the new city of Lubaliches. <laughs> Wala sa Kalaokan. <laughs> Mr. Chair, siguro mas maganda tanongin natin ang LGU ng Kalookan tungkol dito. May, may we hear from uh, the mayor of uh, Kalookan, Mayor o Oka Malapitan. So halimbawa po, kasi ganito po yan, sa pagkakaalam ko po uh, with the permission of Senator Lacson, yung Kalookan, boundary po ng Quezon City. Subalit, merong nalitaw, mil, 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 ang tawag po sa amin sa Kabitel, Lutaw. Merong isang isla doon sa gitna na pupunta ka na ng Quezon City pero bahagi pa rin ng Kalookan. Tama po ba ako doon? Makikiraan. Pero bahagi ng Kalookan bago ka maka... Ah, baga, bahagi ng Quezon City bago ba balik ka ulit sa Kalookan. Tama po ba yun, Mayor? Oo, oh, tama po yun dahil uh, halos magulo ang boundary ng Kalookan. Eh. Tabing ka po naman ng Balinsuela, tabing na yun ng May Kalu, tabing na yun ng San Jose. Misa na uh, kalawakan ka, babiyahe ka, kesit-kiti, dadaan mo, and then babalik ka ulit sa kalawakan. So, meron po talagang parang island dito na nakarating ka ng Quezon City, pero balik mo, kalawakan ulit. Kaya ako tinatanong po yun, ang requirement po ng batas, maaaring sumagot si Congressman Malapitan, ay dapat contiguous yung uh, gagawing legislative district. Ito po bang ginagawa natin, yung measure na nakapasa sa House, ay contiguous. Ang ibig sabihin, dikit-dikit. Uh, kasi yung problema natin, nabanggit ko kanina. Opo, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, magkakadikit po ito and based din sa numberings ng barangay, no? from 178, 179, 180 to 188 po, uh, magkakadikit po ang barangay ito. Hindi po ako sinagot ni Mayor Malapitan, but hindi pa tayo magtayo ng bagong city? Ah, <laughs> uh, Mr. Gerald niyo ginawa na huwian sa Quezon City. Pero eh. yung mahalaga ay yung mga baliches ginagawa na ng isang city na parang ang parehado ng matalo. Matalo yung mga dinig ng Dantilipan. At uh, hindi baka hindi rin po kasaho pag 
kung paano rin tayo ang pinag-usip na kung gagawin na uh, siya da do yun. At marami ang pagagalit sa akin pag uh, pinamigay ko ang uh, bagong sinya. Salamat, Mayor. So, may we ask the Land Management Bureau as well as PSA. PSA, nandito pa ba ako kayo? Uh, Philippine Statistics Office. Tigti three minutes lang, ko confirm ko lang po ito. PSA? Yes, sir. Yes. Tama po ba yung binanggit kanina na ang population ngayon ng uh, first district ay mahigit isang milyon uh, sa Kaloocan as of 2015 census. Wala pa ho itong census na ginagawa nyo ngayon na sabi nyo ay confidential. Baka pag lumabas yung census na yan, eh, baka 1.5 milyon na yan o mahigit pa. Tama po ba yung records na 1.5 one point sa first district ay 1.193 milyon sa first district po yan. Tama po ba yun? Yes, sir. Yes, yes your honor. Uh, Pag hinati po natin na yung first district, gagawin dalawang distrito, si 893,000 plus yung first district at yung bagong distrito na third district ay 300,197. Tama po ba yun? Yes, your honor. 893,222 po. Yung sa uh, first district. Tapos yung proposed third district ay 300,197. Tama po yun? Yes, tama po, sir. So, uh, sa population, pasok po tayo. Wala, confirm po yun. Sir? Wala, wala na. So, ano po ang projection nyo ngayon? Pakatapos nung census ninyo, magiging ilan ang population ng first district? Uh, I, don't have, I don't have the figures right now, but I can provide it. Pero tataas po yan. Baka maging isang milyon na uli yon Yung isang distrito. <laughs> uh, we'll see pa. Oh, kasi yung projection po ng 2017, 903,000 na. 2017 yun. So, 2020, ibaka madagdagan yun kahit Uh, 100,000. Tama po ba? Uh, we will see, we will see po once the uh, uh, population counts are. So, but as of now, wala po tayong uh, pangamba na hindi sila makaka-comply. Salamat po, Director. So, may we ask uh, Yusek Echeverry of the DILG uh, and then thereafter, hindi na siguro kasama dito ang BLGF kasi hindi naman pinag-uusapan ng income dito, Senator Laxan. So, Uh, Yusek Echeverry, uh, are there constraints here for the redistricting of Kaloocan? Ano po ang maidadagdag nito? Uh, kayo po ay tiga Kaloocan din. Ano po ang maidadagdag nito sa bayan in terms of uh, public services kung may bagong legislative district? Sir, um, your, uh, your Honor, um, uh, on the part of the Department of Interior and Local Government, uh, we always welcome redistricting because it would add to more representation and or projects coming from uh, uh, from from the house no but that as it may uh, miss uh, mr chair uh, the department would want no would want uh, more districts perhaps no for for the city of Kalokan, but we will also still yield to the wisdom of uh, the local officials in Kalookan if they see fit that uh, it would only be Uh, just a district for the first district. But as I've said, Mr. Chair, the Department of Interior Local Government would always encourage more districts so that there will be more representation focusing on more projects for each district, Mr. Chair. We, we interpose no objection, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And can we ask the DILG to submit uh, their position paper as well? Uh, we will do, Mr. Chair. Within this, within this week. Uh, Uh, wala rin po siguro ang pag-uusapan dito in terms of Land Management Bureau except the question I, I posed a while ago, Land Management Bureau. Ito pong area, contiguous? Contiguous? Magkakatabi po ito. Hello, sir. Hello, yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay. Can, can you identify yourself? Akala um, ko I'm, LCP ka kanina eh. I'm Engineer Verbo po from Land Management Bureau. Um, with regards po to the, ano, to the, with, with, with this, House Bill po 7700. We already um, uh, sent uh, an advance memorandum to the DNR NCR requesting the technical um, requirements po for this bill. And as soon as we receive those documents, po, we will um, immediately issue the um, certificate of contiguity as well as the base map po of the first district of Kalimantan. Uh, engineer, hindi po ba nung nakapasa ito sa lower house, nag-issue na kayo ng certification? 
Kasi hindi ito makakapasa sa lower house kung wala kayong certification. Sir, um, wala po kaming, uh, hindi po kami na, wala po kaming invitation noon. So, when can you, house. when can you, when can we have that certification? Um, sir, we will follow up po this week sa, sa, sa DNR NCR as long as we receive po, ibibigay po namin agad. Yes, kasi hindi naman po pinag-uusapan yung land area dito eh. Yes, sir. Kung ganun yes. kalaki, hindi gaya po ng creation of cities. Ang pinag-uusapan lang dito, dapat uh, dikit-dikit sila. Uh, yes, sir. Para walang gerrymandering. Uh, you would like to raise something, Congressman Malapitan? Congressman Malapitan? Please unmute. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh... The city of Caloocan po, nagpadala po ng map ng uh, first district o ng third district, no? Ito po, so from the city of Caloocan, we send this through email din po sa, sa inyo. Yung uh, kulay pula, yun yung magiging third district. Yung green, yun yung no, first district. Uh, yung third district, yung green po. Uh, first district is the yellow. Can can we have that on the slides, uh, technical? Para madil madali la lang to. Can we have that uh, sa screen? Pakihintay lang, Congressman. I think I have a copy, but pero para pareho lang po yung pinag-uusapan natin. We, we are trying to upload that on our screen. Can we have that? Ayaw? So, so what I have here is a map, yung maroon, kulay red, yun yung magiging third district. Uh, uh, no, uh, Mr. Chair, yung, yung, yung green po, yun po yung magiging third district. Uh, ang, ang, ang hawa ko po dito nakalagay dun sa legend, yung maroon ang third. Maroon. Mali, mali, mali ba? Mali, mali po. That's the second district of Caloocan po. Yung green po, Mr. Chair, ito po yung... Uh, I think we don't have the same this, copy. This one is the... Third district. Okay, so it's now clear. Nakaiba lang ng kulay, color coding. Oh, so can you show that again on on the screen so we can the committee can ano visualize that. Nawala po, nawala. Yeah, and so yung green ang third district, yung yellow ang first district. Yes, Mr. Chair. Existing. Yung red sa baba yun ang second district. Yes, Mr. Chair. Ano po yung pagitan ng dalawang yellow para mi putol? Yes, Mr. Chair, yung yellow po, yung, uh, yan po yung uh, original first district. Uh, dati na po yan. Uh, Kita niyo po ulit, parang may putol ako nakita, yon. Parang may, hindi siya magka-connect. Um, yung ba yung isla na sinasabi ko kanina? Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, ang Kalaokan po kasi may Kalaokan South and Kalaokan North. So this is the Kalaokan South, ito po yung dadaanan ng Quezon City. Ayun, yun, yun ang sinasabi ko pong island kanina. Dapat nakuha nyo na lang yan, nasukat nyo na ay baka marinig ako ni Speaker Belmonte. Dapat kaloo ka na. Kasi isang diretsyo na yon So wala, wala sigurong problema kasi existing na po yung mga... Yung, pakibalik po, Congressman, mawalang galang na po. Existing na po yan na first district, ibinawas nyo lang yung green para maging third district. Tama po ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. So I see no questions concerning contiguousness uh, insofar as this measure is concerned. Wala na po akong tanong, Senator Lacson, unless the other members of the committee would like to raise questions uh, to our resource persons. Yeah, just, just a point of clarification, uh, because I do not know the answer, honestly. No? Is there a limitation or restriction under the Constitution to pass a measure creating uh, more than one district? Say, because I, I heard during the discussion na yung isang district will have 890 plus no yung population ang ang uh, consideration lang natin requirement is 250 so para makatipid tayo ng mga bills na pinapas ang uh, tanong ko lang kung merong uh, restriction under the constitution say sa single subject rule under the under the uh, constitutional law na bigla na instead of creating uh, an additional district or creating two legislative districts in one area Baka pwedeng gawin na nating three legislative districts. I do not know the answer. That's the reason why I'm asking. Thank you. Congressman, ang tanong ni Senator Rackson, bakit yung mahigit isang milyon, 
eh pagdadalawhin nyo lang baka pwedeng biglain na tatlohin na Uh, maganda sana Mr. Chair pero as of now sa, sa tatlong distrito pa lang nakahanda ang local government din ng, ng kalookan and Mr. Chair based on the Bagobayo versus Gomilek sabi po ng Cortes of Suprema the figures show a disparity in the population sizes of the district the constitution however does not require mathematical exactitude or rigid equality as a standard in region equality of representation So to ensure quality representation through commonality of interest and ease of access by the representative to the constituents, all that the Constitution requires is that every legislative district should comprise as far as practicable, contiguous, compact, and adjacent territory. And based din po sa aming consultation sa first district ng Kaloocan, yun po ang uh, naging uh, na nagusto ang uh, naging uh, kagustuhan ng mga presidente matapos po ang ating consultation dahil meron po silang uh, tinatawag na commonality historical and economic cultural background na nagka, nasanay na magkakasama Congressman, if with the permission of Senator Lacson yung pong tinutukoy niyong commonality, kasama po dito yung uh, Tala Leprosarium? Uh, uh, opo. Yes, Mr. Chair. So, sa first district po yung mapupunta. Kasi, sa uh, sa bagong district po, Mr. Chair. District. So, kaya ko po nasabi yan, for the information of the committee, meron pong Tala Leprosarium. Noong lahat yung may mga lepros yung araw, inipon po yun doon sa Tala Leprosarium. Yung mga kamag-anak nila, dinala na doon. Although, mag may gamot na ngayon sa leprosy, yun po ay naging isang community. Ilan daan libo po sila? Mr. Chair, ang population po ng uh, barangay sa Tal Tala from uh, ang barangay 186 ay 21,000 po ang population nila, 21,668. Barangay 187. So, Congressman, yung mga gumaling na, nag-siuwi pa sa kanila mga probinsya. Pero yung mga 21,000... Hindi, hindi po, Mr. Chair, ang sinasabi ko po yung uh, barangay. Yung mga gumaling po, doon na rin po sila naninirahan, Mr. Chair. Doon na sila nagkaroon na kanilang mga pamilya. Hanggang sa ngayon, andun pa rin po sila yung mga gumaling na. Uh -huh. So, yun po yung binabanggit nyo siguro kaninang commonality. Yes, Mr. Chair. Na sila dyan, so dyan na nagkaanak, at dyan na, dyan na talaga naninirahan. Uh, uh, I have no further questions, uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, I probably... Uh, would have to terminate this having complied with all the requirements we will just await the submission of the DILG and the Land Management Bureau and the PSA if you can submit that within this week I have no further questions concerning the the, the measure and if there is a motion I move to adjourn uh, so, the, the hearing uh, Mr. Chairman so before adjourning we, we will now uh, submit as House Bill number Uh, 770 while awaiting the the accompanying Senate version coming from Senator Marcos uh, Senate Bill uh, 2028 and then we will submit this to the plenary for its appropriate consideration. Upon motion of Senator Lacson, the hearing is adjourned. Mr. Chair,